Steve, thank you very much for joining us on the football show. Look, obviously, every conversation tends to start with how are you? But, you know, genuinely, my friend, how are you? How are you feeling right now? Not bad, to be fair. Certainly a lot better than what I was. Um, but, um, yeah, there's been some hard work to get back behind the desk, that's for sure, and on the touchline. But, um, yeah, certainly better than I was. Thank you. For those that don't know, obviously, you've been, well, one heck of a battle with, with long COVID. How would you describe... Yeah the last sort of what six seven eight months <laughs> an experience that's for sure I, I don't know whether it was just the covid i mean the covid was bad enough and why i ended up getting it so bad i have no idea when i'm somebody that doesn't really get coughs or colds or anything like that really i've i've never been a sufferer of those luckily throughout my life so to get something like that was a big shock to me really and a big shock obviously to my system when you add the punctured lung and you add the emphysema to it that makes it even worse because at the time, you know, when it was all happening, the punctured lung was important and then so was the emphysema. And coupled with having the COVID in the background, I think that's why it made it such a difficult fight, really. I think when I look back, it was 69 days out of 80 in bed. Once I've had me eight hours, I'm up. I'm up and I'm out of bed and either to work or I've gone to the gym or I'm doing something. I've been pretty much lucky like that throughout my life. But um, yeah, I was a bit unfortunate on this one. But having said that, you know, it's not it's not just me. There's lots of other people out there really that are that are suffering and have been in bed. You know, as long as I've been in bed and as poorly as I've been, and you know, there've been some other people who never get out to tell the tale really. So, you know, doing doing this will be, I suppose, interesting for people who have suffered with it, for other people who haven't been vaccinated. Uh, that's the reason for doing this. This is why I think it's so important. The story, you know, probably for me and my family was quite scary. And I really mean scary, you know, sometimes the word scary gets thrown about these days, but it, it literally was scary at some points. But um, thankfully I'm here to um, tell the tale. You can get out of it, you can, you can beat this, you know. I know when I come out, I remember for four or five days, walking around with the biggest grin on my face because I hadn't experienced fresh air, was shut in a room, you know, just a small room, not allowed to get out of the bed. You get out of the bed for your bed to be changed, then you're back in it. I lost a load of weight before I went in and then all the steroids, then your body holds water with the steroids. So your face is fatter, your chin's fatter, your belly's fatter. Um, but thankfully, I've tried to cut them down in the summer when I was at the gym and brutally, I wanted to be off them by the time the season started. That was huge for me. Steve, obviously, sort of physically, you're, you've just taken an absolute well, battering emotionally and, and I, can, I can only imagine sort of the, the toll it took on you and, and the people around you. But also, obviously, you know, you are a football manager and when, you know, you contracted COVID, Shrewsbury were flying. I mean, you hadn't long been in charge, but, you know, you, I remember that run of results you had in, in December where you, you know, you took on and you were beating teams in the top four, the tower rising up the table, everything was going yeah. so well. And then obviously, you know, Aaron Wilbraham stepped in and um, sort of did brilliantly, you know, whilst, yeah. right, whilst you were recovering. But how was it sort of, you know, following results, following your team, the team that you are so emotionally invested in, obviously, whilst you're going through this ordeal? You mentioned Aaron Wilbraham there and then all the other staff within, you know, all, all the other boys. Aaron was my, obviously my first port of call. So following the team in hospital, I mean, the nurses and, and the doctors were, were great. I mean, even when there was a game on, even if I was fully oxygened up or wherever I was, they would put a do not disturb sign on my door. So... They obviously, because I was wired up, then my blood sats would be outside so they could always keep an eye on my blood sats and my heart rate. And they would tell me after the game where it had gone and what moment it was. And I mean, it was, it was difficult to manage the team then. There's no point in saying it was easy. But I felt as though, I felt as though I'd let everybody down at the club. We'd started well, got manager of the month, um, there was a joke going around the, the, chain, the, the dressing rooms that, you know, when the government said, you know, wash your hands for 20 seconds, 
Well, they were saying, the lads were saying at the time that I was washing my hands every 20 seconds. I tried to do everything I possibly could to keep myself safe, you know, I would use outside, I would use tissues on door handles and you don't know where you're going to pick this up. That's what people say to you, where do you think you got it? You have no idea where you think you got it. No idea. But I think when you get fatigued, I think that's when it bites you. One of the reasons you talk to us today is because you don't want anybody to go through what you've been through. So is, is your message to anybody, I suppose, if you're feeling slightly off, go and get tested. If you're, you know, if you're having any questions about the vaccine, go and get vaccinated. Is, is that, is that, you know, is that what you're trying to, trying to get across to everybody? Yeah, 100%. If I could give a non-believer of the vaccine or COVID how I felt for half an hour, they would have the vaccine. Honestly, you, you, don't, you don't want to catch this. It is, it is a killer. It really is a killer. And, you know, we've seen, I mean, is that, you know, 140, 150,000 people that didn't, that didn't survive this. And, you know, and they won't, they won't all have underlying health issues, these people. Um, I know a lot of people that when I, when I first got enough air in my lungs to be able to talk to people, you know, one of the first thing they said was, you know, how, how do you think you got it? You know, I've, I've been a non-smoker in my life. I'm a non-drinker. I mean, I, I would have a drink now and then. I've always exercised and yet, and yet it catches me as bad as it caught me. And there can be other people who might not be as fit in and around my age, and yet they haven't picked it up at all. I think it's important for those people out there that are suffering with those things, accept where you are, because I still get them now, so you have to accept where you are. Talk to people that you're talking to, because you can come across as a bit short and a bit sharp with people at the moment whereas that's not how you want to be but you're trying to get the answer out quickly because you know you haven't got much more breath pretty much like i've just done in that sentence with you then accept it um keep keep focusing on tomorrow and next week because if you measure where you are day to day there won't be enough of a measure to you to think you're getting better but when the season finished, I made up my mind that I was going to do the gym throughout the whole summer because when I came back to work on July the 1st, I needed to be able to be there with the players, to be able to be there with the staff, to be able to manage the football club. I'm really proud that I didn't miss a day, so I didn't give in to it. Whenever I felt a little bit rough one morning, I didn't give in to it. But what I did do was I set out a plan that I had to make sure I had my rest days because you need that to build your energy levels back up again. But going to the gym helped me so much. It improved my lung capacity. You know, my last two lung tests, I've improved on them. For those people that are suffering, exercise is key. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Even though, you know, trying to do five minutes on the Watt bike, God, it was so tough after three minutes, you know, my breathing, I thought to myself, I'm going to keel over here. I'm going to be like Bridget Jones and fall. You know, she gets off that bike in, in the film where she falls off. You think, my God, this is going to happen to me in a minute here. And you're looking around the gym to make sure no one's looking at you in case you fall off. But, you know, I'm, I'm back up to like 30, 40 minutes on it at a really good pace now. So that's a real bonus for me. And, and those people out there that are suffering, you know, you can... You can do this. You've got to build it up gradually, but you can do it. That reception you got, I mean, just talk me through how you yeah. felt. The amount of support that I've had, not only from our football club, from the employees, from the supporters, from my staff, from the players, the whole football world has been absolutely incredible. My phone was rammed with messages. It took me, well, it probably took me about six to eight weeks before I could answer any of them because, I'm, you know, I'd been in intensive care and, you know, I wasn't sat up in intensive care where I could have been sat typing on my phone, you know, thanks thanks for your messages and all that business. So they they all had to wait. But, you know, the football world, it's a, it's a tough place sometimes, but, but the love that has been afforded to me has been really, really incredible.